I realized very late in the process of making this video that I didn't explain at the beginning what it was about. So, on August 20th, my girlfriend and I set out for Salem, Oregon to experience the solar eclipse. A million other people were going, so we were told by every source we should prepare for obscene traffic levels, parking lot freeways, and packed campsites. Undaunted, or at least not terribly daunted, we decided to set out on it anyway. We left the morning of the day before the eclipse, we decided to stop at every thrift store that we could excuse stopping at on the way down. And the reason for that is, I've always had this theory that the really interesting stuff, the treasures, are in the stores that nobody goes to, because they're out in the sticks. I mean, the thrift stores that are in Seattle and Tacoma, they're going to be completely cleaned out because we've got a million nerds like me coming through them every single day. So the weird ones in the out-of-the-way towns, those should be jam-packed with exciting finds. Okay, let's see if that worked out. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, no, it's the medicine place. Anything with flashing lights is a cop. Eight bucks for him. No JVC. Ooh, no. Oh, shit condition? Uh, roll that uh, volume knob. I have complaints about that volume knob. Yeah, that's offensively bad. Let me, uh, let me cure it these for a minute. So we just stopped. Where the fuck? Parkland? I think sure. I think Parkland is where we are right now at the Goodwill, and I just got raked over the goddamn coals, but uh, I got some stuff. Um, I paid too much for it, but. So we have um, Galaxy of Games, uh, which looks to be a really, really bad shareware disc. Um, this is from, I don't know when this is from. It's, oh, it's Windows 3.1, so it's gotta be uh, probably prior to 1997. Uh, so yeah, some pretty bad games there, I'm guessing. Uh, the title of this window is, There Are Many Battles To Be Fought. Yeah, so classy. Um, I got this, a 3D home design program, a uh, Sierra Sports Game Room. Uh, I don't know what this game is, but I'm hoping it's terrible. Fortunately, I think it might just be crappy, not terrible. Uh, World Atlas, uh, Encyclopedia, and then an awful Lith Tech game that I've never heard of before. But I think one of the most interesting things is actually this, which is, I think this is a Muzak demo tape. Uh, Muzak being the company that pipes in you know, crappy, uh, non-licensed or uh, uh, royalty-free music to grocery stores and, and thrift stores and whatnot. Pop moderate, July 2000. So I think this looks like a like a this is a full video cassette. Mm -hmm. So whatever this is, what I'm hoping is that this is an actual Muzak background videotape that you would run on like a um, like a store television display mm -hmm. in like a Kmart in 2000. Um, and it says pop moderate, so I'm thinking this might be music videos, but even better, it might be something worse. It might be cover music videos. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm excited to get that home and throw that in the SVHS deck. I got taken for this haul of terrible CDs for $25. Yeah, uh, they were uh, they were $3 a piece instead of the 80 cents that they usually are. And I didn't realize that until I got to the register. The guy rings them up and I notice in the price book it's $3. And I'm like, oh, I gotta cancel some of these. The dude gets real salty. Fuck it. We need some McDonald's in order to charge up and energize our juice tanks. And I'm here in line, which is a very long line, and there's just this gorgeous piece of granite here, I think. I don't really speak rocks, but it just looks like if I was into stonework that that would be, I would be sitting here just slavering at that hunk of stone, just going, man, I wonder, I wonder if I give them like 40 bucks, if they'll let me just haul that right out of their little Zen garden that they've got in the double drive through We're going to be, I'm not sure we'll get to the eclipse at this rate, because this line of cars is uninterrupted. It's like an experiment. It's like uh, it's like something that like the Mythbusters would set up. Can't One of our good citizens will uh, uh, let us through. Well, exactly. Like they, they set this up in order to find out what happens if someone just gets no opportunity. Like what will they do? And on average, how long will a person wait? This is my opportunity. I'm taking it. Wow. Uh, I 
guess this is a parking slot. This is a parking slot. Huh, weird. Uh, the Lacey Goodwill is fucking terrible. There's not a goddamn thing in there. That place is about the size of a porta potty, which is funny because they shove out the extra cash to get like the red letters that say Lacey in cursive instead of just like the normal Goodwill signs. They spent extra money on making the sign, uh, but didn't spend any money on putting anything in the store for you to buy. So uh, I did find a copy of the first Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing, uh, which I did not buy because for $3 uh, I could buy two double cheeseburgers, which is a much better deal. No. I think we already did that. I think we're going to Central, what? Oh, two well, double cheeseburgers. Yeah, and that's why I know how much they cost. So we're going to Centralia now, uh, is our next stop, which is 30 odd minutes. About a halfy is the terminology I would use. And uh, I expect that to be just as dismal. $3 I mean, for a compact disc in the year of Luigi on the desktop, 2017. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's saying hi. They are two decades. It's a different, it's a different truck and a different pub. Got this is a counterfeit Papa. It's neither Murphy's nor John's. They're just squatting in this old abandoned Sherry's. Oh God, this parking lot and this Goodwill look exactly like the awful Bellevue Goodwill and the awful Bellevue Goodwill parking lot. That's the worst Goodwill I've been to. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, awful old fax machine. That is a film projector. Yep. Uh, oh, God, another space maker. Oh, man, awful, but I should plug it in. What is a caliphone? Can you pull that out and let's see here? Yeah, there we go. What? Oh, you know what that might be? That might be a device to allow, uh, it's like, like like for classrooms, to let you, let like six people listen to the same tape cassette at the same time. Mm, so maybe. it's got like six headphone outputs. Oh, is that an old uh, beta deck or an old VHS deck? VHS, but it's named Quasar. Oh, we like that. God, this place just looks like it's, it just looks like it's rotting right out from underneath us, you know? Like it's the, it's the nothing from uh, the never ending story. Yeah. That's just like, crumbling away to black <laughs> monsters. <laughs> is this a department store chain elsewhere? I don't know. Oh, it's Maurice's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought it said monsters. <laughs> I swear to God, that's what I thought it said. <laughs> oh. When well, Kearney isn't your friend. Yeah, 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 they, they really hecked that one up. Your best clothing purchases are at Monses. <laughs> Mounces. <laughs> hey, wait, isn't that Arby's sign too short? What the fuck is wrong with this Arby's sign? It's not tall enough. It's, it's fucking, it's being displayed on the wrong display and the aspect ratio is all fuckered. Oh, the Kelso High School is having a senior citizen's prom for all the people who were born here, lived here, and are dying here. Ah, the Red Canoe. Is this a hotel? Oh, it's one of those, it's one of those small town credit unions that exists to try and keep you trapped in your hometown because you can't use that card anywhere else. I mean, not without a $3 fee. I've personally known people who have actually had to make like a three hour drive back to their hometown in order to speak to a bank teller because their bank doesn't exist outside of their hellhole that they were born in. Yeah. Well, not a guess. Well, I mean, what yes. every bookstore has. So, grocery store, and they've got real high... The last few of these haven't gone so hot, so here we are in the long view, Goodwill, and hopefully our luck is better here. Okay, well, not really. As it turns out, the electronics section really didn't have much to speak of here either. However, what's this? a whole bunch of old PC software CDs. This is literally exactly what I've been looking for in order to get material for my channel. 
all sorts of utility software and some games for PCs from the early 90s. This is perfect. I spent a really, really long time looking through these, but I figured I'd just buy them all. And then I remembered the $3 a piece price. So here's a few gems I found. I wasn't willing to spend three dollars on this because I'm a Cretan, but my god, I would really love to own a CD called Twain's World. But no one else would love me for owning it. This appears to be some kind of explore the world from the comfort of your own home discs. It's probably a bunch of 256 color JPEGs. I will not apologize for my soft spot for fax software. I almost got this thing, especially because Silver Coyote brand, but three dollars. And this! I really wanted this! I mean, it's fonts to make awful worksheets for elementary school classes, but three dollars! The Longview Goodwill was a much better deal than the last one. They had a whole shitload of software. I have another nightmare from Expert. It's called Animated Email. <laughs> okay, I thought that animated was, um, I thought it was an exaggeration of some kind, but no, it makes animations for email. I don't know whether it sends a MOV or a GIF or whatever, but whatever this is, it is a... This is a shit fire. Add amazing effects such as Whirlpool, Orbit, and Tornado with a simple point and click. How do you want me to pronounce <laughs> that? Apostrophe uh... N. I really like this aesthetic as fuck shareware disc. Despite the fact it only has 40 games, I pretty much got it because of how... I, I'm gonna frame this and hang it. I don't recognize any of these but I just noticed that it has GNU Chess on oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah, so they actually they actually distributed something that, um... Oh, they broke the law! Yeah. Oh, they, they actually violated the, uh, the GNU. Uh, that's good. So then there's this one, which appears to have a reprinted cover for some reason, but this is actually a 2003 shareware disc put out by ValueSoft, which is a division of THQ, uh, our favorite defunct software publisher, so that's weird. I think this is an office suite for seven-year-olds. A word processor and art program for kids, and I'd like to find out if it's better than what's been sold to adults, which is entirely possible. And then finally, I got these two gadgets, which are quite a trip. So you, you mount this in a five and a half inch bay, and, and it's got these big nasty radio buttons, and it switches in one of three hard drives. So this is basically a cursed product. Like this is, um, God had no hand in making this. I will definitely be having this open to see how it works. Ah, shit, I'll avoid the warranty. I can't do that. <laughs> I have a theory that this was a failed product. There's another one, same store. I don't know if it's newer. I think it, well, I mean, of course it is. It's the Trios too, but I don't know how much newer it is. It certainly looks newer because that was all beige and cheesy. And this one, it's got the silver paint that didn't really hit the hit the market until the, the 2000s. And yeah, as you can see, this one actually has a, a little external gadget. This one, though, much more depressingly, however, uh, and I'm not sure what to think of this, but this is actually a PCI card. See, it's got, and I'll have a video about this later, but uh, this actually is a card that mounts in your... Oh. Shut the fuck up. Okay, yeah, it's just there to hold it in place. No bullets! Oh my god! I can't believe they've done this! Holy shit! It's just... It's a, it's a simulacrum. It's a PCI dildo. It's not a real car. The power doesn't even come off the bus. Why? You could have run this off the bus! <laughs> Why? See, I know what this is. These three chips, if I look these up, I'm gonna find out that these are like 20 line digital switches. So essentially each one of these is a flip-flop wired to a bank of transistors. And the idea is that this FPGA here reads the input from the control board externally. And depending on what you're requesting, it turns on one of these switches and turns off the others. In other words, it's just like a, um, an old mechanical VGA transfer switch where you, you flip the switch and it just unplugs 20 wires and plugs them in here. So this is doing that same thing, but it's doing it electrically instead of mechanically. Uh, this is a perfectly reasonable approach to this. Bullshit. Awful. 
Uh, I will use it if it works. Cursed design, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Uh, it is kind of beautiful and I sort of love it. All right, that was a really good haul. That place had fuck all. So it was on to another one in another town. Jesus fucking Christ. Look at this Goodwill. Look at this palatial fucking Goodwill. I'll bet it's gonna be really sad inside. Oh, it's a superstore. So apparently there's a category of Goodwill called a Goodwill Superstore, which is for the most part just a really, really big Goodwill. And in fact, they even had a cafe. I did not check the cafe out though. Okay, but what do they have in the way of gadgets? Well, first off, I found this old Sony digital camera that was both that weird 2000s blue and silver. So the most 2001 thing ever. There were an enormous number of film cameras there. And if I was still interested in collecting film cameras, I probably would have walked out with about eight of them. But there was nothing really to speak of there. So I took off hoping to find greener pastures. But I don't think a thousand extension cords really counts as that. I was super weirded out by this amplifier they had here from NAD, which had the case actually taken off of it. I would think they would have thrown that out. Goodwill always has stacks and stacks and stacks of DVD players, and I keep wondering if they're actually worth anything. I mean, the things were $30 by 2005. Is Goodwill actually selling them? And then of course the usual, a million Xbox 360 power supplies. Literally the bottom shelf was just 360 power supplies. Uh, most of which are probably bad. Uh, children's toy accessories that don't have the toys with them. You know, goodwill fare, right? So that was pretty much a bomb as well. So I got back on the road for the next location and on the way there I decided to give an update on that awful, awful traffic I was promised. Somewhere in Oregon and that's because we're going to the Eclipse and everyone else is going to the Eclipse too and so we were told that this was a fool's errand uh, that basically the roads were going to be jam-packed and utterly fucked for like a three or four or five day period surrounding the goddamn thing and uh, this is actually pretty much it's pretty much the clearest I've ever seen traffic in Oregon ever. And I mean, we're we're 10 minutes from the fucking zone of totality here, so like, all of the predictions were wrong, uh, other than the fact that, I mean, supposedly the hotels are all filled up, although honestly we never checked. So yeah, um, I, I don't know what all of that was about, but this only happens here like once every 50 years, so I guess maybe their information was a little out of date. Okay, here we are, we're in Salem. And we're gonna eat at a place that serves Elmer's glue. So for the Eclipse, we decided, uh, since we couldn't get anywhere to stay, that we were just gonna go ahead and sleep in a parking lot. And since I have a mid-size SUV, we were able to set it up as a pretty good camper. I mean, we uh, brought a couple of sleeping bags and a couple of pillows. And honestly, it looks like it's gonna be fairly comfortable. I mean, I'm six foot two, but I think this thing's at least six foot two, so I think we're gonna be okay. So we're just gonna set up and probably watch anime for the whole night and then go to sleep. It was not comfortable. Oh, man, I don't even know what. What day is it? It's, uh, is it Monday? Sure. Yeah, um, yeah, so trip report, uh, sleeping in your car. Anyway, that's my trip report. My neck has like six types of cricks in it. I, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night because my CPAP, because I have sleep apnea, uh, had stopped running because apparently it, it completely drained one of the batteries that I brought along. It was very humid in this car all night. Yeah. Because we were in here just... You know how much moisture is in there? Then at about, about two in the morning, I woke up and I was cold. And I went to get into the sleeping bag, but I couldn't figure out how to open it. So pretty much we brought the sleeping bag just for no reason. Yeah, I, I could feel every single detail of the floor plan of this 2003 Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition. Oh god, so you have what, two and a half hours to the Eclipse? If it's past 7.30 now, yeah. 
I'm pretty goddamn tired, but we're gonna go find some coffee. We're just gonna so we're just gonna get those uh, Starbucks Frappuccino things. This is Portland. There are five coffee stands within a block. Yeah. Uh, we can't actually move from the spot because we'll lose it. No, we, we can walk to it. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to do the thing where I say that and then I pan. When we parked the previous night, this parking lot was completely empty. All these people arrived after midnight. Every single one of these cars, and there were hundreds of them, had all pulled in sometime during the night. And I woke up at times and saw them pulling in at like 2 in the morning. So apparently everybody rolled in here in the dead of night to sleep in their cars. Which, like I can't argue with, but it's interesting because we're apparently the only people who took it seriously that everyone said that Oregon was going to be completely goddamn unnavigable due to the traffic from the eclipse. That turned out to be bullshit. So everybody else here kind of had the right idea. Next, I went for coffee, and when I got back, Daria told me she'd bought a welding mask lens from some enterprising young capitalists walking the parking lot, which was fortunate because we'd screwed up the logistics and not bought enough Eclipse glasses for ourselves. So I tested the camcorder through it. I wasn't able to get it focused on my first try, but I figured we hadn't really planned on getting any footage of the sun anyway, and a million other people would be doing that, so if I couldn't get it perfect, no big deal. The sun is here, and I hate it, and I'm glad that it will be dead soon. Finally, the fight will be won. We will be victorious. We brought weapons. Well, we didn't. We got scalped in the parking lot because <laughs> everybody in the entire Pacific Northwest sold out of anything you could use to look at the sun with. The Home Depot was out. The Harbor Freight was out. Christ, look at this crowd. Everyone was out. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of people here. Uh, clip should be starting any moment now. So I messed around with the camera, trying to get my shot lined up, trying to get ready. And there it was. The very first glimpse of it. There's the moon, destroying that bastard in the sky. In case you have any uncertainties about the incredible brightness of the sun, here's the before and after. See? Dang thing's bright! Once it started, it proceeded very, very quickly, and before we knew it, the sun was mostly occluded. An awful lot of people brought their beautiful, beautiful dogs to this event, so everywhere I went, there were gorgeous dogs, and this absolutely adorable pupper was parked right across from us, just having the best time, just being alive. The thing that was really strange to process is that at this point the sun was way more than 50% occluded, but outside it looked like just a normal day. It didn't seem like the sun was any dimmer than it normally is, but that was going to change. In fact, by just a few minutes later it looked like some sort of weird dusk outside. I didn't actually bring a tripod, so all my footage of the moon itself is really shaky, but this is where it was at at this point. And then a couple of minutes later, then a couple after that, and then a couple after that. It was this dim, and it was 10 o'clock in the morning, and the sun was in the wrong spot for it to be this dim, so nothing felt right. We're closing in on the last few seconds, getting close to a total eclipse. Now there's just a sliver left, oh, damn, you should get your head and I'll try to time-lapse this so you can see the last little bit. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to stabilize it, but enjoy if you can, I suppose. The sun's almost completely gone, and we don't need the filter to see the last little sliver disappear. Oh. <laughs> and there it is, total eclipse of the sun. I have to admit I was stunned by the quality I was able to achieve. This is shooting with a $200 Best Buy camcorder, a Canon R800, nothing special, no filters. I didn't even have a tripod, I was just balancing it on the hood of my car, and it might be shaky, but look at the quality. Look how clear this is. I never thought I would get to see it this clearly, except in photos from NASA and other photographers who were out there, but looking at this on the LCD when I was actually out there shooting it, it was spectacular. Even as a little tiny blip on a little tiny LCD in front of me, I could still see everything you're seeing right now, and I could tell just from that little representation that what I was looking at was really magnificent. 
I decided to take a chance pointing my camera straight at the sun as the moon started to move out from in front of it. I mean, I figured the sensor wouldn't be damaged from just a second or two, and if it was, it's, it's just a camera, not my eyes. The rest of the world just looked like dusk. It looked like 9 or 10 p.m., but I knew it was the morning in my head. It was just very hard to accept. In my head, the day was over, but the sun was still in the sky. It looked like the normal sun to my eyes. It just wasn't illuminating anything. After a few minutes, it was clear the sun was coming back out, so I thought rather than just shoot my camera straight up into the sky trying to get the same video a million other people were getting, I would try and get something new. So in this clip here, you could see that it looks pretty bright outside, but that's because my camera auto-adjusted itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera on the hood of my car, and I'm going to fix the exposure. So it looks bright right now, but as the sun comes back out, you're going to see how much brighter it gets. Hopefully that'll give you an idea of how dim it was out there. And there we are, full brightness. That was about eight minutes compressed into 30 seconds. So now we have to go find some burgers in a place that's not completely goddamn overrun. <laughs> so I'm thinking two hour drive to find even a Denny's that we can actually get a table at in less than an hour. But maybe on the way back, we'll hit some more thrift stores. And of course, naturally we did just that. This was the Salem St. Vincent de Paul, and as with most of those, it's primarily full of old appliances, hair dryers, George Foreman grills. Oh, linear tracking. Yeah. Oh, a front-loading turntable. Cute. I have to admit, this whole trip was mostly a wash. I mean, I just went through acres and acres, just reams of completely worthless trash. All the treasures I hoped to find in all these out-of-the-way thrift stores, yeah, I think that was just wishful thinking. It was mostly just bric-a-brac. Trash. As a redeeming quality, though, they did turn out to have quite a lot of CDs. I mean, really, just a lot of CDs. I mean, a lot of CDs. And there was software there, too. Ooh, SWAT 3, the good shit. Alright, so we got Tonka Construction, what's the secret? Penny's Arcade! Hey, that's my favorite webcomic. Scrabble, Sudoku... Here we are, shareware, more shareware, more shareware. Dual Quest, Clip Art, Paint, Write, and Play, A10 Silent Thunder. Alright, so I got a bunch of CDs there, and then it was off to the Salvation Army across town. Okay, so like for whatever reason, I don't know what it is about this town, but the thrift stores here won't let you bring backpacks in. Every single one I've been to along the way coming down here lets you come in with a backpack. And this sucks because I've got my whole DSLR camera rig in my backpack, and I'm not going to leave that in the car. So, yeah, I just got kicked out of a Salvation Army. Not to be defeated, I'm on my way over to the Value Village just west of here to see if they're backpack tolerant. They were, but they were absolutely boring, so I didn't film anything. And after that, it was one more trip into a random Goodwill on the way up north, and that was it. We were at about 4 or 5 o'clock. We couldn't really justify spending any more time on this, and we hadn't found really anything other than a few CDs, which I'd spent way too much money on already. So that was the last thrift store we hit on our trip. So the only thing left was the drive home. Look at all these fucking dogs! There's so many dogs out in this field. It's picturesque as fuck. So the trip was worth it for the Eclipse. I'm not sure if it was worth it for the thrift stores. I did get a couple of really cool things. The, the triple switch IDE controller thing, that was pretty neat. Uh, both of them, I, I guess, in different ways, although I think I trust the first one more. And a lot of the software I got, I'm excited to try out, but I got taken for nearly $60 on that stuff, which is just criminal. I mean, I swear, a year ago, CDs were like 79 cents at thrift stores, and now uh, I, I actually, I found like a Reader Rabbit teaches typing today for like $6.99, and they individually labeled it, and I have no idea who's making the decisions on these things. So, yeah, things have really gone just completely wacky at the thrift store pricing department. But I did get software, and the Eclipse was pretty cool. So, 
I guess that trip was worth it.